Well, hello everyone. On behalf of the Limavady Gospel Hall, I'd like to welcome you today. Thank you for choosing to uh, click on to this video. And my name is Blair Martin and it's my privilege to be able to bring the gospel to you today. But before we read from the Bible, let uh, me pray and look to God for his blessing. Gracious God and Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thy beloved Son, we draw near to thee. We do thank thee, our God, that thou art accessible and that we can come to thee by faith. We can come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and we come with uh, this prayer today that through the reading of thy word and the preaching of the gospel, that there may be some who will listen to thy way of salvation and will place faith in the Lord Jesus. We remember thy word tells us that we must repent towards thee and place faith in thy son, the Lord Jesus. If ever we're going to be in a right relationship with thee, if ever salvation from sin is going to uh, be accomplished, we are God long that there will be those who this very day will turn to thee for salvation and trust the Lord Jesus Christ. So we give thanks for the opportunity of preaching the gospel. We pray that thy word might be richly blessed to every heart and to every home that it goes into today. We ask this now for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I would like to read from the Bible, please. And the verse that I have in mind for today is John chapter 3 and verse number 16. I'm conscious this video is going out on Mother's Day, the, the 14th, Sunday the 14th of March. And as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about my upbringing. I was very privileged to have a Christian home where I was brought up. And from a little boy, my mum taught me the scriptures. Uh, the Apostle Paul <coughs> speaks to his friend Timothy about this. And he says to Timothy, <coughs> in 2 Timothy, he says to him, from a child, from a babe, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And I have a, a great debt of gratitude to my mother, as I think of this Mother's Day, for teaching me the Scriptures. And this is probably one of the first verses that I remember learning. And I've got my mum to thank for that. So let us read together. The golden words of John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Great words, 25 golden words of salvation. Let's read them again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we do know that God does bless his word when we read it. John chapter 3 and verse 16, what a great verse it is. And perhaps I'm speaking to someone today and you look back over life's journey you look back down through memory lane and you like me can remember your mum or your dad or a grandmother teaching you this very verse maybe you can look back to sunday school days and you learn the learn the golden words of john chapter 3 and verse 16 or maybe this is a a new message to you as you listen today as you have tuned in today and you're hearing words that are new to you let me tell you these words are words of truth. These words are words of salvation, words of power, straight from the heart of God, the God who created us, the God in whom we live and we move and we have our being, the God who holds our breath in his hand is a God who loves us and a God who has proved his love by sending his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to dark Calvary's cross to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And I would like to share with you a message I learned so many years ago about the, the love of God 
presented here in John chapter 3 and verse 16. I want to speak first of all about the fact of God's love. Do you notice the beginning of our verse? For God so loved the world. What an astounding, amazing fact that is. We naturally tend to love people who love us. But God, our creator, God, all-knowing, he knows everything about his creatures. Individually, he knows us all like an open book. And God loved us when there was absolutely nothing lovable about us. The Bible makes it clear that men and women are lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And men don't even like to retain God in their own, in their, in their thinking, in their own lifestyle. God is not relevant and yet God loves us for God so loved the world. I can understand that statement if, I, if it was the world of creation and the world of beautiful mountains and scenery and lakes and we think of the, the wonderful creation that we live in, the world and all its splendours. And God, on five occasions in the book of Genesis, as you read those early chapters of creation, God looks upon the world his hands had made and he says it is good. And then on a sixth occasion, he said it is very good. And I could understand if we were thinking in John 3 and verse 16 about God so loving the world that he had made. But it's not the world of flowers and the world of mountains and rivers. It's a world of sinners that God loves. It's a world of people like you and me. And as I said, the Bible doesn't airbrush anything about the heart of man. He tells the word of God. It tells us exactly what we are. We're sinners by nature and by practice. And as soon as we are born, we go astray. We've inherited a sinful nature from our parents. And way back, the first man that God created, Adam, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death is passed upon all, for all have sinned. We've all come short of God's standard of perfection. And the wages of sin is death. Eternal separation from God is the result of our sins being unforgiven. And if we die in our sins, we'll not be in heaven. But God, for God so loved the world. God loves us. We sometimes sing, God loved the world of sinners lost and ruined by the fall. For God so loved the world. That's an amazing fact. The world that God loves, a world of sinners, he loves us with an everlasting love. He loves us when we were unlovable, but he's proved his love, friends. He's proved his love. There was a group of people in the last book of the Old Testament uh, part of the Bible, in the book of Malachi. There's a group of people and they're, 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 they're lifting their fists in rebellion against God. And they're saying, wherein have you loved us? Prove that you love us. And well, maybe you're like that today. Maybe you think God is disinterested. Maybe you think God is unaware of you and unaware of your circumstances. Can I tell you, God knows us and God loves us. And he's proved that. What does our verse tell us? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Oh, the wonder of the love of God. God did not spare his only son, but delivered him up to the place called Calvary. Yes, God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. And what a day it was when Jesus, the baby, came forth from Mary at Bethlehem. What a day it was when Jesus, my saviour to Bethlehem, came, born in a manger to sorrow and shame. Oh, it was wonderful. Blessed be his name, seeking for me. Yes, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And in order for sinners to be saved, God sent him to Calvary. God sent his only begotten son 
into the world to go to the cross. And 33 and a half years on from Bethlehem, the man Christ Jesus died on the cross, sent there by God, sent there to deal with our sins, sent there to put away sin to the ultimate satisfaction of God because the Son of God, the co-equal, co-eternal Son of God has no sin of his own. And he was the only willing fit one to go to the cross, to die for the ungodly, to satisfy the requirements of God and to lay a righteous basis where a holy, sin, sin-hating, righteous God can pardon and forgive and cleanse every sinner who will come to God by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now here's the, the fact of God's love and the act of God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The Bible puts it like this, here in his love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the well-pleasing sacrifice for our sins. Oh, the wonder of it, the wonder of the love of God, the Father sent the Son to be the saviour of the world. Could we with ink the ocean fill and where the skies of parchment made for every stork on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry nor could the scroll contain the whole though stretched from sky to sky. The love of God, the act of God's love what a proof this is to any heart that would doubt it. But what about the pact of God's love? God is willing to enter into an agreement with sinners. God extends his arm of salvation. God extends his love to us through his son. And the verse says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, <clears throat> that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God is willing to save sinners this very day because of what took place 2,000 years ago at the cross. God is willing to save you today. He's willing to cleanse you. He's willing to forgive you if you would only agree with God about your sin. You'd only be willing to repent, to turn away from your sins, to be done with the old life, to be done with your sins and turn to the Lord Jesus by faith. The whole matter of your salvation rests upon faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Agree with God about your sin. Admit that you're a sinner. You've broken God's law and you've turned away from God's way and God's will. And admit you need the Saviour. Not only agree with God about your sin and admit that you're a guilty, hell-deserving sinner, but accept what God has done through his son at Calvary's cross when the Lord Jesus Christ died for sinners, when the Lord Jesus Christ gave his life in ultimate sacrifice, when his precious blood was shed at the cross for guilty, rebellious sinners like you and me. And if you come to believe on the Lord Jesus, if you come to put your confidence, your faith, your trust in the person and work of Christ, there at the cross, you'll not perish. You'll not be separated from God a moment longer. You'll come into a right relationship with God. The moment you believe, the moment you put your trust in the Lord Jesus and rest on him for salvation, you enter into a right relationship with God and you're destined for heaven rather than hell. To perish means to be lost, to be in a place that is separated from God and Christ forever. The fact of God's love, for God so loved the world, the act of God's love, that he gave his only begotten son, and the pact of God's love, <clears throat> whosoever believes in him, in Christ, in the son, will not perish, but rather have everlasting life. Have the life of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What a great verse for this Lord's Day. 
this Mother's Day. But more important than that, what a great verse for you to believe on and have your eternal salvation and your eternal future secure this very day through the words of John 3.16, through the way of salvation that Christ has made available to mankind. Thank you for listening. May God bless you as you listen to his word today. Shall we pray? Gracious God, our Father, once again in the worthy name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bow in worship and adoration. We say like Paul the Apostle as we think of the greatness of thy love, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. O oh, our God, thou dost not spare thy son, but he was sent to dark Calvary to die for ungodly sinners. Oh, our Father, we just bow in worship to give thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ died for the ungodly, but rose again the third day and is a living Saviour available to meet the need of any who will call on him today. So bless thy word to every hearer today, we pray, as we give thanks for the Lord Jesus in his worthy name. Amen. <laughs>